Hey everyone, Justin Crumley here with the Cujo Productions channel, uh, appearing in front of the camera. It's been a while since I've done that. Um, and uh, as you can see, I'm in another location. This is my dad's office. So I, I might actually start recording in here more often uh, when, like, I got to do when I'm doing a video in front of the camera, because there's just so much more room in here than there is in my room. The lighting is a lot better in here, uh, and uh, it just this just this just looks more professional. Uh, so, um, yeah, so what am I doing today? Well, I'm doing, uh, a video. There's a tag going around on YouTube called, uh, Childhood Trauma. It's basically where, uh, people on YouTube go around and make videos talking about, like, uh, TV shows or movies that may have freaked them out as, uh, when they were kids. Uh, so I thought I would give it a try, uh. I think this tag was started by uh, Your Movie Sucks is the channel. Um, I've seen a few other people do it. Now, I have no direct affiliation with Your Movie Sucks. Um, I don't know uh, anyone that runs that channel. I don't, know any, I don't really know a whole lot. All I know is I, I'm guessing that's where the tag started, I think. But I'm not 100% sure. So anyway, I saw a few other YouTubers do it. I thought it'd be kind of fun if I pitched in and shared some of my stories. Uh... This video won't be, like, as exciting as some of the other ones. Like, I'm not going to play any clips or anything like that uh, because I don't want to take the risk of getting hit for copyright or any of that. But what I will do is I'll show, like, a little logo if I have any because there's one in particular I'm not going to have any kind of image for. Hope you guys enjoy this. <laughs> I know I will. Uh, so first I want to get into one thing that sticks out to me. This is the one I don't have an image for. I want to get it out of the way right away. When I was a kid, there was these PSA commercials that would freak me out. They were for, like, uh, anti-gun violence, uh, for child abuse, and they, they just played this really freaky music, and it would show people, like, shooting each other, and, and one, one, one commercial I, I remember seeing, uh, there, there was one where they actually showed, like, uh, the aftermath of a gun crime. It showed some kids, you know, some guy being taken to prison in the back of a cop car, it showed a mother sitting on her child's bed, rubbing her, rubbing his pillow, like remembering when he was still, he was still there. Uh, they actually showed a dead body in one. It was like, uh, where they, they put the little tag on your foot when you're, you know, when you're in a, I think it's an autopsy thing or a morgue or something, whatever they call it. I don't, I'm not hundred percent clear. That, that, that shit freaked me out as a child. It, it freaks me out. It still does to this day. I still get I still get goosebumps when I uh um when I think about it. Like even now it's giving me it's kind of giving me chills. Uh so uh yeah, uh if you guys know what I'm talking about, uh some of the creepy PSA commercials they used to play, uh let me know in the comment section below if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Tales from the Crypt, namely the intro. I never saw too much of the show as a kid. I uh, I don't think my parents had HBO, so the the few times I saw the show, uh, it uh, you know I think it was at like a friend's house or something. I'm not I'm not 100 percent clear. Um, might have been at my might have been at my like uh, my uncle or my cousin's house or something. Um, one of the two. Anyway, uh, the theme song still freaks me out to this day. I got to give Danny Elfman. A lot of credit because that that intro is so creepy it gets you so hyped for the show when i was a kid freaked me out namely the part where the crypt keeper pops out of the uh out of the coffin and starts laughing just that cackle man holy fuck <laughs> oh boy oh my childhood was awesome Moving on to the next show, or actually this is another intro, The X-Files. Holy shit. This show was pretty creepy. Uh, I, I much like Tales from the Crypt. I didn't, I didn't watch a whole lot of it. It just kind of freaked me out as a kid. Uh, and uh, to this day, it probably still would. But I think today I could get through it because I've seen a lot of scary things. The X-Files intro, even to this day, still just like, freaks me out if i if i'm walking uh like to go to the bathroom or or i'm doing anything in the dark and that song just kicks off and starts playing i just freeze up i can't even i i, I just no forget it 
as far as the show goes, I know I said I didn't see a whole lot of it. I do remember a few, like, moments. I think there was an episode, like, where there was some alien freaking someone out. Uh, it was, like, hiding in her kitchen or something. I'm not I'm not 100% sure, so don't don't quote me on that. I, I remember seeing a clip, some, some, I think it was, like, something, like, uh, very paranormal or or like like the the devil or something coming from someone's child and like she pulls out a blanket and lifts it and it's like all demonic looking i i don't remember i was a kid uh the the episode that sticks out to me though even as an adult is the episode home i think you guys know what i'm talking about it was the episode that got banned after one showing it's a very very brutal episode very gruesome and i uh, i suggest you check it out if you ever get the chance. <laughs> Moving on to the next one. This might be a little different. Uh, I don't know if anyone would ever expect to see this on a list like this. But for me, this really disturbed me as a child. And uh, not so much today, but it's AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, the movie directed by Steven Spielberg. Uh, interesting story behind it. I'll, I'll get to that in, a, in just a second. But uh, why did this freak me out? Well... I don't remember when this movie came out exactly. Uh, I'm going to look it up right now. 2001. So I was about nine years old when this movie came out. And on the surface, it's not the freakiest movie, but I was a little kid when it came out. I saw the ads for it. It just looked really weird. And uh, the few things that stick out to me, I remember my parents actually rented it when it came out. I remember the one scene, like, where he's trying to eat, like, spinach or something, and his eye, the kid's eye, the, uh, who plays him, was it, uh, it was Haley, Haley Joel Osment, I almost said Macaulay Culkin, but no, it was, it was Haley Joel Osment, he's, like, eating the, uh, the spinach or, or something like that, and his eye, like, goes droopy, and it's, ah, uh, you know, as a kid, it freaked me out, and then there was the, the, the what was I talking about, oh, yeah, there, there was a scene where there was a, there was a pool, Sorry, I got a little sidetracked. Uh, they're, like, having a pool party or something, and he, like, grabs the kid and says, keep me safe or something, and he pulls the kid in the water and almost drowns him. And I think I think after that, they, they, they figured there was something wrong with this android. This scene right here was the was the, the straw that broke the camel's back for me, for nine-year-old me. His mother took him out to the woods and just left him there. And he starts begging her and crying, no, don't leave me, don't leave me. And I was like, that's it, I quit, forget it, I I, I can't do this. Because I was a little kid, and the idea of being separated from my parents kind of freaked me out as a child. It just didn't really sit well with me. And even today, I, I will, if I try... Uh, if I try to watch that scene in particular, it kind of bugs me. It doesn't. It doesn't make me want to turn the movie off. But like I said, it's it's been forever since I've even sat down and and uh, watched it. Now I mentioned that the story around the movie is more interesting than the movie itself, at least in my opinion. Uh, well, I watched um, this Nostalgia Critics review of it, and uh, and he explained that it was originally. Uh, Stanley Kubrick that was uh, that wanted to make this movie, but unfortunately he passed away before he could uh, get it off the ground. Uh, so anyway, Steven Spielberg took over and did did the project, and uh, I remember I remember uh, the nostalgia critic was like uh, doing his research, and as he's talking about the movie, I remember uh, the theme in the movie was like a, a some blue some blue angel or or some something like that that could grant any wish and. Uh, uh, H Haley Joel Osment, he finds uh, the, this the statue of this blue angel, and he ends up like shutting down or shutting off or going into some kind of robot coma. I, I don't remember what exactly. And uh, he wakes up a number of years later. I want to say uh, I, I don't remember exactly how many years, but by the time he wakes up, his mom, his dad, I think is I think the the original kid. That he was, uh, I don't want to say replacing, but I can't find another word. They're all like all dead. They're all like there's almost. I don't think I don't think humanity is even around anymore when he wakes up, and it's a bunch of like humanoid, weird looking creatures that allow him to to have one final day with his mom or grant one wish and uh, or or something like that. Basically, the the blue angel. I, I see. I'm, I'm talking out of my ass here. I don't know. 
exactly what happens. But in a nutshell, there was a scene where he cut a piece of his mom's hair out and his and his little bear friend kept it. So because so because he had DNA, they were they were able to successfully recreate her. And uh, unfortunately for him, it was only for one more day. So it's actually quite sad the way the movie ends. Um, now I remember, I remember Nostalgia Critic or Doug Walker, if you prefer, going into uh, detail about how if Stanley Kubrick had done it, he probably would have ended it when he found the the movie. Probably would have ended when he found the Blue Angel. Um, but Steven Spielberg was the one who wanted to drag it on. Come to find out, it was actually the other way around. I think Steven Spielberg. I'm not sure how true this is. Said that like uh, that he would have uh, ended that he would have ended it at the Blue Angel, but Stanley Kubrick kept it going. So in honor of Kubrick, he kept it going. So yeah, the story around the movie probably a lot more interesting than the movie itself. At least uh, what what I remember of it. Now I want to go watch the Nostalgia Critic review of it <laughs> again. Uh, but anyway. Um, so yeah, as a kid, in a nutshell, AI, artificial intelligence, kind of freaked me out, and I have not had much of a need to go back and watch the actual movie. I don't know if I ever will. Maybe I will one day. I don't know. We'll see. Moving on. What list like this would not be complete without a mention of Courage, a Cowardly Dog? Come on, man. I'm 25 years old. Courage, Cowardly Dog was awesome. You know, I'll keep, I'll try to keep it brief, but I'll point out the obvious ones that we're all thinking about. Uh, that little blue thing when he was having a dream in that episode with the nun that's always pressuring him to be perfect. You're not perfect. There was also an episode that parodied The Exorcist. Yeah, pretty freaky movie. <laughs> uh, but as a kid, I didn't think that episode was in particular very freaky. I thought it was hilarious. Kick him in the dishpan. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> so while Courage had its disturbing moments, it also had some funny moments. Uh, I only scratched the surface and barely at that at all the freaky moments in that show. So believe me, there were a lot more that I left out. Last and certainly not least, I want to talk about Goosebumps. Not Goosebumps, the entire show. The entire show didn't freak me out. And I know a lot of people would probably expect me to put uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark on this list, but to be honest, I never really watched Are You Afraid of the Dark as a kid. As a kid, I didn't. But I will say, that fucking beginning, the intro to Are You Afraid of the Dark, still freaks me out to this day. So, had I watched it as a child, I could include it. I just wanted to give it a mention. But uh, Goosebumps, the show itself, I went back and watched it on Netflix. It's a really stupid show. <laughs> it's a really it's a really stupid show, but I love it. I, I got nostalgia attached to it. I saw the movie on Netflix as well, and I actually ate a whole thing of Klondike bars while I did it. So uh, that, was, that was fun. Uh, but anyway, um, not the show in particular. I want to talk about one character. One character in particular that freaked me out as a child. Slappy the Dummy. Jesus Christ, this thing was nightmare fuel for me as a child. Just everything. Everything from that little cackle that he does. <laughs> uh, to the sound of his fucking voice. Hello, Jimmy. What's a good guy like you doing in a place like this, huh? I'm kind of bummed that I actually can mock him. Anyway, uh, this little shit freaked me out as a child. I remember watching uh, an episode of this, and me and my cousins, we were just kids. It, uh, we, we, were, we were playing like hide-and-seek afterwards, because we were just little kids. So we, we went out in his backyard. This is like nighttime. My grandma was watching us. Yeah, we, we, uh, we went out in the backyard, and it, it, was like, it was dark out. It was almost pitch black, and I was so freaked out after watching this. Then I kept giving away my hiding spot because I kept scre I kept screaming. <laughs> oh my childhood. <laughs> oh boy. So yeah, Slappy from Goosebumps. Oddly enough, I saw Child's Play when I was uh, I, I saw the first Child's Play movie when I was like twelve or thirteen, something like that. It didn't freak me out as much as I thought it would. 
Uh, maybe because I wasn't, I was like a preteen teenager, so that stuff kind of just stopped being scary to me. I don't know. Uh, but Slappy the Dummy always, always got me as a kid. So anyway, guys, that's my childhood trauma video I want to talk about. I really do want to thank everyone for watching this. What are some of your childhood trauma TV shows, movies, commercials, whatever? Uh, go ahead, share it down in the comment section below. I want to hear everything. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a great day. If you're not having a great day, I hope it gets better. Until next time, I'm Justin Crumley, and this is Cujo Productions, signing out.